All right, folks, so this is a throwback video to my years of outfitting, and it's going to walk you through how I used to pack out elk in the wilderness with horses and mules. If you're going on a horseback wilderness hunt, it's going to show you the process that goes down once you've harvested an animal. Now, if you're a do-it-yourself hunter, but you're still hunting wilderness areas, you're hunting remote stuff, you're going to get a ton of value out of this also because you never know when you're going to need to use a packer. It may be un unanticipated. A lot of times that happens in archery season. Guys get way back in there further than they think they are. They kill an animal, say they got a bull down 10 miles into the wilderness area. They quickly realize they're going to need help to get it out before it spoils. It's not an ideal situation, but a lot of times horse packers can get you out of those unanticipated situations. It's key to know how to prep that meat and get it ready to rock. So when those guys come in, they can get it out for you. If you watch this video, you're going to know exactly the process they use and you're going to know how to help them the best once you know that process. If you get value out of this video, please do me a huge favor and like it and subscribe to the channel. So got killed last night and one of my guides uh, did the gutless method on it. We call it short quartering, but basically you just take off the quarters and you don't gut the animal. So what you end up with is you got two hindquarters each in a bag, and then you got two shoulders each in a bag, and then you got a bag of your back straps and tenderloins. You've got a head. In this case, the guy wants a Euro mount, so um, we're gonna actually pack the whole head out intact. If he just wanted the skull plate, um, I might just, and he wanted the cape it even, I'd just take the cape off and just cut the skull plate off. It's a little bit easier to pack, but that's what we got to start out with. We match them up, so shoulders are in one set of panniers, and then hindquarters are in another set. And then with the tenderloins and back straps, we just split them on uh, the shoulders because they're going to be lighter weight. So these are going to go on the mules, and then we're going <clears> to <throat> show you the hitch that we use, and then we'll show you how we put the head on. The next thing we're going to do is we've got the, the quarters in here. These are the shoulders, but we do it for both sets of panniers the same way. I'm just going to do what we call a, a, a bosco. Other guys call it box hitch. But essentially, get your cinch there. Tighten it up. I take a loop on this just to hold it. Throw the rope to the other guy on the other side. In this case, my other guy slash gal is the cameraman, so she's gonna go over here. Okay. And then here we do our first box hitch. Go around the hawk. Front of the pan here. Over your tail. Make sure you're behind the hawk here because what you want to do is this isn't a massive elk but if they're a little bit bigger you can actually in the shape of your mules different you got to make sure that stays off of them so what i do is i go just next to the hawk back here pull that tight and then when i pick up it just kind of pulls that whole quarter off the off the mule because i'm doing it by myself i'll have the rope kind of hold its own slack there. Throw the rope off the other side. And then I'll do the same thing here. The second box, round behind the hawk, over the tail. And then here, same thing, get around all the meat that's the only way you're going to be able to pull it off your horse or mule. Get it up off his shoulder right here. And then, just going to finish it off with what we call Packers Knot. And then a half inch over that. And then, after we get the other one packed, we'll put the head on here and we'll use all this tail to lock that down. In this case, we don't have a skull plated or caped bull, so it's a little bit of a challenge. There's kind of two ways you can pack them when you get them up there. You pack them nose down like that, but then you got your horns way up high. If you're going through any tight trail, it's not ideal. Um, but with a bigger bull, you almost always have to do that just because the well tails are going to poke them. In this case, this bull is just right where we can set him down like this in between the hocks. And we're going to be able to lash him perfectly. The only thing is, is, looking at the bull from the back, you can see that if it works down on the ride, his whale tails are going to end in the mule. Cut a pole, stick it right here. 
that's going to keep those horns off his flanks. I'm going to jump in right here because I want to mention something that's very relevant if you're packing bulls out like this, but they have a big long cape on them, all right? One of the key things you can do, particularly if you have two people, you really need to have another hand with you to do this, but put that head up there, get the antler situated in that sawbuck or decker right down the middle, and now you've got this big mushy cape. These are a huge pain in the ass to pack, to be honest with you, because if you let them lay into one pannier, you're going to have your, your, your weight's going to be off and that, that load's going to rock the wrong way. So you actually have to pack that big mushy cape on top. But the best way to deal with it is don't put it in a big tall heap right under the head because then you got that center of balance up high and it rocks. You want to spread it out a little bit on the top of the saw buck or the decker. Get that cape out and then put the head and the antlers up there just like I'm showing in this video. But when you do this, put the head on before before you hit your panniers down and hitch those quarters down. Because that way, when you send the rope over, right, when you're, when you're tying that box hitch, you can send it over that cape, right? And you can snug that cape down with the actual box hitch because it goes over twice. So you can have two different layers, spread them out, and then the, you put those two different times the rope comes across, spread those out of the, over the cape, and you can really get those tight with the box hitch, and that's gonna help you with that problem. Because after that, you can proceed with the tail, or you can go in with two decker ropes and have independent clove hitches to manipulate. But the key is, you've used that box hitch to, to really snug down that big mushy cape. So that's a tip for you guys. Every time it's a little bit different, but for this bull, this, this, this style is gonna work. So I'm gonna run a half hitch over his nose, and that's going to end up sucking that down onto the saw buck. And then I'll throw my tail over the other side. I'll make sure that half hitch is tight. I'll do another half hitch over his nose. And then here, I'm going to come down to my packer's ring on the cinch. Thread my rope through. I'm going to use that cinch that those half hitches down and here I'm going to go over in front of the bull's brow tines like that and the whole concept here is to just suck as much of that looseness in the in the head as you can down to the saw buck so you don't have any movement when you're packing so here I can use that ring to suck all that down and then just finish off with another packer knot. And then we can just kind of check it. You can see that's pretty darn solid. Everything kind of pulls together. I want to talk about this process a little bit more. In this situation, this wasn't a real big bull and I didn't have a huge cape attached to it. So what I show you in this video works well, but what I do a lot of the time, and I wish I had some good film of it, I just have little pieces here and there, but what I would do a lot of the time is I would actually bring in two decker ropes, and what they are is they're just shorter ropes, right, and they'd be the same on each side of the saddle, and what I do with those shorter ropes is I would actually basket hitch the panniers, so I had one rope on this side, one rope on this side, independent ropes, I would basket hitch those panniers and then I would crows hitch them. And what that means is when I basket hitch, which is a very simple knot, you can look it up. There's tons of videos on it. I would take the loop that comes out of the packer's knot and I'd go down to my packer's ring on the mule's cinch and pull it up. And then I take my tail and go through that loop. So I had a sturdy contact point. So I'd have that on both sides. So I'd end up with two tails. And for bigger bulls, this is really nice because you can take those tails and you can clove hitch them up to points on the antlers or even the main beans, beans themselves. And then you can clove hitch those and you can manipulate that rack back and forth via those independent ropes. I did that a lot on bigger antlers and bigger bulls. And the thing about clove hitches is you can slide them in, you can tighten them, you can adjust them on the fly, and that helps a lot. All right, folks, I hope you found that video interesting. I kind of laugh when I was watching it because you can tell I'm kind of out of energy. It's the middle of elk season, kind of the latter half. 
burn out a little bit, just worn out from being in the mountains. So there's not a ton of energy there. If you got value out of the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're not into this horseback stuff, you're just watching it in the case that you might use horse packers. So if that's you, you're actually a do-it-yourself backpack hunter in the wilderness. I've got another video that's specifically for you, and it's how I pack meat out on my backpack. I'll stick that video here, guys. Go check it out. Thanks for watching.